G'day folks, welcome back to Measure Twice Cut Once, Season 5, Episode 1. We are back on track, so to speak. Um, my, my name's Dirk from Sumo's Projects. I can be found on YouTube, Instagram and Facebook. And standing beside me is my buddy, my mate, Chris from Built by Chris. He's also found on uh, very similar platforms, Chris. Yep, YouTube. Um, Instagram, Facebook. Yep. Sometimes Reddit. Sometimes Reddit. Arguing with some of the admins. If I, yeah, if I, if I get around to it, I don't like arguing with people. Nah. It's not, my, it's not my thing. Nah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, now, we have quite a few announcements to make because uh, this season is actually going to be a little bit of a new uh, season going forwards. We have a, a few more um, people on board. Where we're calling our supporters to the show, which is fantastic. Um, Pre just proud supporters. Proud supporters. Proud supporters. Oh, it's, it's without doubt. The, the yep. pride is there. Um, make mention too, Chris, we now have a Facebook Measure Twice Cut Once group. Yes. And I think, yeah, we've surpassed the 100 people who are now sort of signed up to be part of that. Yep, they're all members, all members, uh, members. signed up to us, yep. And and the, the place is there for everyone to share a little bit of the information. We will put up as admins, uh, what are you guys up to, show us photos, yep. particular topic, show videos. Also, if, if they're having a problem with something, yeah, put it out on the on the page and someone will obviously answer the question for you. If someone's got an idea to share products, yep. you know, it's not there as a sale based thing, but you can share that something is for sale and we can all chip in and you know grab some of the discounts there. Yeah, why not? So introducing uh, one of the first new supporters to Measure Twice Cut Once this season uh, will be Uptons, Chris. Uptons? Yep, Uptons are a, what, what do you call them? Uh? They're a building supplier. Building supplier, yep. Uptons Building Supplies. And uh, part of the reason we, we um, have spoken to Uptons about coming on board is uh, Coming on board, see, see what I did there? Is because of the amount of money you spent in the store. Yeah. Buying board. Yeah. As you can see, very well decorated by uh, Uptons. Yep, I cleaned them out at one stage, I think. You did? With plywood, yeah. yeah. Uh, so Upton, Uptons are a um, fantastic uh, business, uh, very easy to deal with, and they have a pretty extensive network. They do. Uh, in and around Australia. They do, they've got seven um, seven stores yep. up and down the east coast. Yep. Uh, they've got two, two stores in Queensland. Uh, they've got uh, one store in New South Wales, mm -hmm. one in Tasmania, and uh, two in Victoria. Terrific. That has six, that has up to six, not seven. Yeah, yeah there's, there's one. Put the website up, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Let, let the folks have a... They can have a look for themselves. Look for themselves, so... Yep. Yeah, so... Um, Stay tuned to, uh, with that because uh, we'll be doing a, a little bit more uh, in detail some footage from Uplands and yep. uh, you know showing you some of their products and things that they are associated with uh, to do with the building industry mm -hmm. and, and woodworking in general. So yep. it's yep. a good thing. So plywood or sheet goods, I should say. Mm -hmm. Sheet goods. They sell a great range of sheet goods. Yep. Um, they sell timber. Yep. As well, um, and they sell aluminium doors and frames. Yes. Yes. So if, uh, if you want to change a door or, an, uh, or a window, yep. you, you, you just give up and a call. Exactly right. So the, uh, the second supporter who's uh, joined us, Chris, is a, a Blue Car CNC. Now, this is a business that's uh, sprung up a couple of years ago. Adam is the owner of the business. Yep. I had the privilege to speak to Adam uh, not that long ago. What an outstanding gentleman. Uh, he's all right. Is yeah, right? yeah, that's right. He's, this guy's got a few things already. He's comfy, but I'm, uh, I'm, <laughs> no, I'm by no means. Um, I'm looking forward to starting my CNC journey, I should say. Yep. And uh, I've been a little bit inspired from watching Chris, um, Rob Kalani, uh, there's Gav, all, yep. all the guys who got their names here on, yep. on Chris's little keyboard. But um, yep. yeah, so CNC. It's uh, what can we say? Australian mate. Is it, yes, is it the future of woodworking? Um, I'm starting to believe it's an integral part of the whole woodworking journey. Because there was always the question, um, is it really woodworking? Yeah, yeah I, I think people were sceptical uh, once upon a time due to the price restraints. The very prohibitive cost, yeah, very, very, very expensive, yeah. 
and um, whilst now it's within the realms of uh, affordability, it, it, it is still a little bit expensive, but I mean, yeah, it can allow you to do so many things that you would never have thought you could do, and you can uh, probably make your money back on the investment in no time if you find oh, the right quickly. marketplace yeah. for it. Very even, quickly. even for making things for presents and that. Yeah, yeah. of course. See, it's carving, yeah. beautiful. But if you want to know everything uh, you want, you need to know about C and C. Give Adam a call. Speak to Adam. Adam's great. He'll yep. um, more than answer your questions. Yep. And um, and he's he's uh, extremely knowledgeable. Yep. And there's more announcements to come on yeah, that. Yes. So yes, there are. that's uh, two of the beautiful suppliers. We also have Nathan from Hamaru, uh, Scott from Custom Creations, and Dave from My Matter Create. They've been on board for a while now. Yep. Much appreciated your support. Yep. It's been excellent, and uh, look forward to keep working with you guys as well throughout the. I think I think what, I think what we might do, Dirk, is uh, maybe change up the uh, ads a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah sort because, of. Because our acting skills have gotten so much better now. Oh, look, Chris, I'm, uh, you know, what can I say? I'm, I've been practicing holding an Oscar, you know, or a Logie or something. So you're holding it wrong. So yeah, see, all right, there's a bit more practice needed there. Um, as well as that, um, we have a nice announcement of a new segment to measure twice, cut once, which is. Two minute come on. Tool oh, two minute tool tip. Two from minute tool tip from James Finger. Is, is it two minute tool tip or is it two minute tips? Tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. Two minute tips and tricks. Yeah. We haven't even worked out a name for the segment yet. No, no. And we've already got James doing uh, half hour documentaries on him. Yeah, yeah. So Okay. You yeah. see James has got that like that uh, Gift David, of the Gap? No, David Attenborough approach to oh, he does, yeah. to be thorough. Yes. And that's what we appreciate. Yeah, no, we, we told him to keep the two minutes, yeah. so the first one he produced was five minutes. Doesn't so, matter. So thanks, James. We'll see, you'll be watching that on uh, this episode. Yeah. So, thank you, James, indeed. So, Chris, uh, any other announcements before we get into our wonderful chat with someone today? Yeah, one last announcement. Uh, we are going from weekly to fortnightly. Yes, definitely. Many episodes, yep. Yep. And the reason for that is because we're not uh, trying to not do the show as frequently but it is a matter of being uh, authentic and being in the, in a location to do it mm. so you know it's still a road trip for me yep. but this studio is set up and it's a beautiful place to make the videos and also um you know it's good to have a chat get to come together rather than do it over the internet mm. which is uh sometimes technology uh Deprived, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> yes, you're right, and um, just gives me a little bit more time to um, yeah. produce yeah. a good video. That's right, and um, they might be a little bit longer some videos, but you know we're trying to keep the uh, the interest and uh, the topics always fresh. Yes. So, Chris, today we have a, a very good uh, person to have a chat with, and he's uh, he's come, he stayed awake and drank drank a lot of uh, coffee. Yeah. Just to be with us. Yep. He's uh, the one and only Jesper. From Jesper Makes. All the way from Denmark, so... Oh, I'm looking forward to that. After we hear from some of our supporters... Yeah. You're going to hear from Jesper. G'day, bud. How you going, Papa? I'm good, mate. Listen, have you got any blanks from Mind Matter Create? I certainly do. I, I just happen to have them here in front of you. Okay, I want to buy them, please, because I'm going to turn some pens. It's a pleasure to be able to do business. Here they are, sir. And uh, many happy returns on your pen-making endeavours. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. uh, sir, you have to pay for that. Yeah, Chris, so uh, like I was saying, mate, we have a special guest. He's uh, he's looking really uh, primed, uh, considering it's about 2 a.m. in the morning where he is. Yeah. I'm well, speaking of the one and only Jesper from uh, Jesper Makes on YouTube, Where's, Instagram. Whereabouts is he? Uh, he's, he's about an hour and a half from the capital of uh, Copenhagen in Denmark. Ah. Is that right, Jesper? And that's, welcome. That, that's right, yeah. Yeah. Hi. Hey, guys. Yeah, so um, it's a it's a quite an honour. We, we've uh, known Jesper for a little bit. He's um, he's actually 
slowly becoming an honorary uh, Australian because he, he knows that many of us. Yes. And um, he sort of, yeah, it's just uh, what's Jesper up to. It's like normal conversation. He's part of the team over here, but he's actually a long way away. If if he ever comes to Australia, he'll be like a, uh, just a, a, na- a regular. Yeah. Yeah. A regular. Yeah, regular. Maybe, yeah. I, I hope so. I, I I feel like a regular. So so. Uh, we, yeah. Thanks, to, thanks to you. You have something. Yeah. Uh, you have something awesome going on in in Australia with your, with uh, with your network and your makers meetup and uh, and and your podcast. I have learned so much from from uh, from listening to to all you, uh, all you creative guys in, in in this podcast. So thank you very much and thank you for having me. No, thank you for the kind words. Well. Your your background, uh, Jesper, because we we always have to establish where you where you started out and um, yeah. where you're at now. So, well, today we're going to be having a bit of a candid or open discussion about um, you know what makes you and how uh, the type of lifestyle you live, and also you know how you got into social media and uh, the aspects of it, which uh, obviously you you incorporate into your YouTube channel. So. Let's yeah. go back a little bit to early days of Jesper's upbringing. Were you motivated or encouraged to learn um, any types of hobbies such as what you're doing now? Uh, no, not really. So uh, uh, I basically my, my father learned me to to chop firewood. That was that was about it. So uh, so I didn't learn anything uh, with woodworking or anything i was mostly interested in, uh, in computers and uh, yeah a little bit of gaming and a little bit of uh, programming when i was uh, when i was uh, young so uh, and then i started uh, with the with the company you may know in australia musk uh, so I, i'm a trained uh, navigator so i can navigate uh, the big ships so, um, so I have uh, been traveling around the, the world, not to Australia though, but, uh, but uh, about uh, everywhere else, really. Do you still do that or are you retired now? No, no, no. I, I, I stopped a long time ago. So uh, I, I didn't want to, uh, I, I did it when I was pretty young. So, uh, so I stopped, uh, I, I stopped uh, when I was young and uh, I met my my wife and uh, and we decided to to settle down and uh, and uh, and I got some uh, some jobs in uh, uh, not not sailing. <laughs> wow. So I I basically started two years ago uh, trying to find my hammer and uh, and uh, now I'm sitting with a with a lot of tools and and a YouTube channel. So that's that's been an an amazing uh, journey. I think uh, maybe. Was it uh, one and a half year ago? I suddenly saw uh, Sodberg uh, show up in my comments on one of my first YouTube videos, and uh, saying hi and cheers from from Australia. So that was uh, that was very kind of you, and, and thank you for that. I think I had maybe fifty subscribers at that point, so that was uh, that was great. After you told me about this guy, I jumped on. I had a look at a few of his videos, and I decided. I don't like Jesper because he's got a better workshop than me. Um, he, does better, he does better videos than I do. Um, so I definitely don't have a better workshop than you do. <laughs> oh, and and right. your camera is, be- is better as well. So <laughs> we're, all getting there. we're all getting there. But uh, no, I, I, uh, I actually fell in love with your channel. I uh, jumped on board straight away. So yeah, you, you, you do some really, really, really good work. Okay, thanks. No, not a problem. Where do you get your, where do you get your inspiration from? Where where do you get your ideas from? Sometimes I, I yeah I I saw one of your shows where 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 you were talking about where you're getting your inspiration and you're looking at the, like Pinterest and and uh, what other makers do and and I do that and I do that a lot. Um, but I I just think uh, sometimes if, if you can. If you can do something really crazy that nobody else has, has done, you know, you can uh, you can create some 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 more interest for for a project or for for a video. So, 
and maybe it's a really stupid idea and 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 maybe the product is not turning out the way you want it but the you know maybe the process and maybe the videos is, is is good and maybe people are watching it and and and, and getting new ideas and and trying to to do it in another way and and uh, so I, I i also look at a a lot of uh, YouTube videos with makers who who are doing all sorts of uh, crazy things, and and that that gives me uh, fresh ideas uh, and and make a spin on somebody else's crazy idea. So, I I, I think the the word of uh, being authentic, authenticity, is something that strikes me with your content, Jesper. Um, where, as Chris mentioned, we we can be a little bit plagiaristic, you know copy ideas and then enhance them where you'll come out with a, a, a real fresh cut of um, a good video, you know, which 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 I think is always something that people are searching for because mm. it's 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 so difficult to, to diversify your channel <laughs> nowadays into something that captures the imagination in just a little bit different regard but brings you back into, you know, the woodworking realm. Um, yeah. So how how did you find that you could do that? And you know, is it? I mean, obviously, original content helps. But how did you find the motivation to get to that point? I I think I just uh, uh, I I just like to to try new things. And uh, you know, I, I, did you see the workbench uh, video? Uh, yeah, I made a yep. workbench from from uh, from all these old uh, horse. Not horse shit, not horse shit poles, uh, <laughs> and uh, and I and I thought uh, nobody wants to watch another uh, video about uh, a workbench built, and uh, uh, and then I came up with the idea to to cover it in uh, in these uh, cookies, so so it became a, a little bit different. I don't think uh, anybody else has has a workbench covered in uh, in in cookies. So, uh, so it became a, a little bit interesting anyway. So, I, I tried to find some something, uh, and uh, maybe it's a stupid project, but but maybe you can you can, even if it fails, you know, it, it can still be a good video. Uh, there could be some learning in 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 the failing. I have a I have a video coming uh, where I, I think I fails, I fell with epoxy pouring three times in a row. And I, I, I decided to instead of cutting that out, uh, really make make that the focus uh, of the video instead. I don't, I don't think there's anything. Um, there's nothing stupid out there. It's always uh, the imagination, the creativity that you know. I think we may say it's stupid of our own content, but uh, it, it's something that might trigger you know a spark in the dark for someone else. I was watching. Um, a channel that's come across once again on my feed two weeks ago, a Ukrainian woodworker, and you know yeah. he was homemade uh, in Lviv. Homemade in Lviv. I'm uh, I'm not sure the name, but he was making a cutting board and he cut cookies, like yeah, you know, just cookies, and um, he he routed out in the cutting board the shape of yeah. it. Yeah, you've seen that one. Uh, I'm not sure I saw that exact one. Well, he he did. Um, he glued them in, and then he poured epoxy, and yeah. the final effect was the cookie look, uh, sort of just weaved into the cutting board. And yeah. to me, I said to Chris, it's the best cutting board I've ever seen in my life. Mm. It's just something that I've never seen, and wow, you know. And you know, I I hark back to your videos where you're doing things like you're using. Uh, the heat, the the fire to do the show. Is it what's the effect? Show sugi ban. Show sugi ban. Yeah. And then, and then the application of your homemade uh, wax. Yeah. Which you know, just watching that is like uh, this is this nice to watch. Uh, Jesper, you all right? We've touched upon Jesper's YouTube. And yep. He's also on Instagram. Yeah. Probably not as. Um, We've noticed recently some of your videos have really um, shot shot through the roof of uh, you know like well, getting. Be, before we get onto that, okay. Don't hit the table. Sorry, 
before we get on to that, why don't we uh, listen to another one of our supporters? All right. We'll do that. What do you reckon, Jasper? That's a good idea. G'day, Hoss. How are you, Harry? Good, thank you. I'm looking at doing a little bit of epoxy work. Yes, I can help you there. Do you have a product? I do. Who, who does it come from? It comes from Hammeroo. Let me have a look, please. My, my. That looks like a two-part mix. It is a two-part mix, and it's a two-to-one mix, as it says on the bottle. Is it made in Australia? It is. I might take a few more, then. Well, I only have these. I'll take those. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Harry. You're welcome, boss. It's got the paint. <laughs> Chris, we're always trying to be a little bit different. Yes, we are. So we dress differently. We do. What else can we do? Um, I don't know. Introduce some tool tips? Let's do that. Who can possibly help us out with it? Um, James Finger from Fixer Fingers. Thanks, Dirk. Thanks, Chris. James here from Fixer Fingers Woodworking, and I have been honoured to be invited on Measure Twice, Cut Once to share a few workshop tips in about 90 seconds to two minutes with you every episode, season five. Today, for Measure Twice, Cut Once, we're going to be finding out how to not cut twice, measure three times, measuring and marking, measuring and marking. Let's take a look at some of the tools that I have and a few tips and tricks on how to use them. Okie dokie, before we mark anything, what are you marking with? Really depends on the accuracy you want to achieve. The old carpenter's pencil, if you're doing rough construction work, is going to be more than fine, but with that big chunky top, not the best. For today, I'll be using the in-between, the good old HB, going to give you a slightly finer line and you can see it nice and clearly, but of course, the most accurate thing to do is to have yourself a marking knife where you can get a very fine line indeed, but occasionally it can be harder to see. Depends on what you're working with. Pencil is what I use most of the time. Sexy, sexy, two by forge. Yeah, free plug. Okay, now the basics of measuring and marking tools. When you are doing construction -y type stuff, there's nothing really better than a good old engineer's square. It will let you very quickly mark out and you'll be accurate. If you are cutting, of course, we want to make sure we are cutting on the right side of the line. That is my simple way of doing things if that is my waist side. So now that I know, I'm going to cut my saw blade down here in order to have the correct measurement. Perhaps my favourite measuring tool is my combo square. It's one of my five essential tools for marking out. However, I have recently seen this one, though it is a few years old, is not the best anymore. How you check whether your square is square is to do that one line, flip it around, and do another line. Here they start off nice, by the end of it, we're about a degree out. I've got a new one of those on order because that one is no longer doing 90s. However, for its ability to measure depths, go onto your 45s, and again, for the same quick 90 degree measurements, a combo square is one of my favourite tools. Also has a little hidden trick, if you don't have a marking knife, most of them have one of those. Where you can scratch out with your tiny little awl in there too. My next most used tool is the Craig Multimark. There are other brands that do very similar things. I mostly have it into this sort of depth type pattern. So say I wanted a 54mm line across there, I can mark it out quite nicely and accurately. And also for setting router bits and saw blade depths, I use that quite a lot too. Honestly, that offset ability is the primary thing I use this for. This one also swings around into 45 and the 90 degree too, but I have other tools that I use more for that. But having a depth controller measuring tool like this is a worthy addition to your workshop. While more of a measuring tool rather than a marking tool, having yourself one of these digital Calipers, I find absolutely invaluable. When you want to know how wide something is, how thick something is, how big that random bloody screw is you've just picked up, 
absolutely great thing. The cheap plastic ones like this, I've had it for a year or two. Look, they're not the best, but they are perfectly reasonable. You can get really, really nice expensive ones if you want. Second to last, a protractor is a nice thing to have too for measuring out those angles, particularly when used in combination with your sliding bevel gauge made by Vipin Envisage Designs naturally. Last but not least, the most obvious thing we all have is a tape measure. I'm sure you've seen a thousand videos recently about how this bit here is meant to move so that you can push it up against something and get an accurate read or pull it against here. That's just making sure your zero stays the same, but you're not really using a tape measure for precision work. A couple of ways to avoid cutting in the wrong place is not only just literally measuring your line twice to make sure that it is where you want it to be, but secondly, knowing how long your overall length is and coming back the other way. So if I want to put a mark here that is 150 mils, I can mark it from this side. And then if you want to do your double check rather than just measuring it out again, I can see that that is 195, which means this should be 45 and it is bravo. Say you wanted to find the middle of that. Well, define middle. Let's go to the true center first. You've probably all seen the trick. Whereas if you divide the corners, that point there is now the middle of that. That'll work for any four-sided thing, regardless of whether it's square or not. That's going to be plumb center. Let's say we wanted to cut this in half. This is where a depth tool like the Multimark comes in handy. Check that out to be about 74, which means we need to set halfway 37. Then we can run our mark along the middle, flip it around, and come back again. I was pretty close on that one, but if you were a tiny bit out, you can now see exactly where your middle line is. Last but not least, on really long pieces, it is just as simple as coming from two different points. So if that's my line there at 81, two and a half, don't measure there again, measure the other side, 81, two and a half. This is why I like tape measures that are imperial only, if that is your thing, or metric only. So I have the same markings on both sides of the tape measure. So we said these are gonna be five minute segments, right? <laughs> I think that's probably a more realistic goal to get some useful information across. I've been James and Fix It Fingers. I hope you enjoyed this little one, and I'll see you on the next episode with something I haven't decided yet. Catch you then. Can you, can you sort of reflect on waking up one morning and looking at your, your statistics, your analytics, and going, well, what's happened? Yes, uh, I can. Um... Uh, I, I had a feeling about it because uh, I, I published uh, um, the Pallet Blocks coffee table video back in October last year. And uh, and uh, when I published it, a few days after I could feel it, it, it had some different traction that, that my, diff my previous videos did, didn't have. So, um, so I think uh, at first it brought me from about 700 subscribers to, to 12, 1200 subscribers in, 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 I think in, in a few weeks. So, uh, and then it is sort of quiet down again, but, uh, I could see it, uh, kind of, it, it tried to break out sometimes. It had some, it had some, uh, some, uh, yeah, some, some small, some small breakouts, uh, from time to time. Uh, and um, I started to experiment with uh, with uh, with the thumbnail because I could see that was uh, that was the problem uh, with the video. So the the retention was uh, was really good, but the, the thumbnail was uh, was not so good. So uh, so I started to change them and started doing uh, A/B testing of uh, of the thumbnails, and uh, and I ended up uh, with a thumbnail. I think that was number six. Where, where I'm just holding up one block, just up in the air, and just uh, photographing that, and uh, and put it on as, as a thumbnail, and uh, and after that, it's just it just uh, it just took off and uh, and really started to. Uh, I don't know what it is, you know. Uh, uh, you make a 
a great thumbnail. You 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 pose and you show the final table and everything and 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 that that's you never know what what make uh, what makes the click and uh, in this case uh, you know it was uh, was just one one pallet block in in combination with the title. So uh, yeah, I've only just started uh, doing different thumbnails now. Okay. Because of uh, Uncle Knackers. Uncle Knackers told us that the thumbnail is the most important part of the video, you know. <laughs> it's, uh... Yeah, yeah, I, I saw I, I, I saw your episode with uh, with Uncle Knackers and uh, and he, he uh, that was actually that was where I learned about the about the thumbnails and, and titles. So uh, so that was uh, that was pretty good. That was really good uh, good advice. We we can't we can't talk too much about Uncle Knackers because he'll start wanting us to pay him for it. So <laughs> oh. probably not. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Um, if you're probably familiar with uh, Crafted Crafted Workshop. Yeah, Johnny Brook. Now Johnny mm -hmm. Brook, he he uh, he's really made a, a a lot of varied type thumbnails. Um, there was a time he was building a lot of furniture coffee tables and that and the thumbnail was basically setting that on a in a driveway you know with just a little background and yeah. uh, trying to trying to you know capture an audience doing that and then he's uh i think he even changed his logo or lost it on a few thumbnails uh, which which people do tend to do but um it, it's it's a very difficult and fine art to get as you said the the proper thumbnail mm -hmm. to stop someone going Oh, we've got to look at that. And and I think Uncle Lagos like said he, he we should put our faces in in the thumbnail and and I I tried that and and it I think it's working for him because he, he's got such a, such a cute face. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's not working for me. So just by, so all right, you, you're now you're now on your journey. You're well on your way with a, a yeah. couple of good and successful videos. Uh, you know, you sort of established yourself and um, you, you've got a, a reasonable network of people that you can now talk to, well, you know, mm. you can have people over yeah. here and what have you. Um, what's Where do you see the future of your YouTube going uh, from? Before we get into that, we're going to have another listen to a supporter. I was about to say that. Because you just mm. you just plough straight on. No, I was, no, I was building it up. I'm you're not building nothing. And I was going to say, coming back to the answer. No, just uh, no. a break from it. I'm I'm the director, and I'm saying oh. we're going to go to a support. <laughs> oh, here we go now. <laughs> G'day, Hoss. You look like you're in trouble. Yeah, Harry. Thanks, mate. Um, I've, I've been trying to sand up this blank, but I just can't get it shiny enough, mate. I've got a two-part solution from Custom Creations. Really? Does it work? Give it a try. I will. How'd you go, mate? Harry, that was the best stuff you could have given me. Look how shiny this pen's come up. That is superb. I oh, love it. It's brilliant. Um, yeah, so Jesper, looking forward to the future of um, YouTube. Obviously, you're, you're enjoying it and you do a great job, which we yeah. established. Where do you see this going now that it's had a little bit of success? I would definitely, definitely like to to continue making videos. I really enjoy it, and uh, uh, yeah, the recent success also. Uh, uh, yeah, that gave me some. Uh, I, I didn't have any contacts in in Denmark before. I, I didn't know any other makers, and I actually have, uh, I think, five uh, five people contacting me now, and uh, from from Denmark, and and yeah, people that want to meet, and uh, people who invited me over to their workshop. So, so that's uh, that's that's very positive, and. Uh, also heard from some uh, some uh, some brands and some companies who who also noticed me and um, and uh, have started to to talk to me about maybe doing uh, doing something in the future. So um, 
so I'm definitely going to uh, to continue to to explore this 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 adventure that is YouTube and 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 the workshop and uh, I don't know maybe uh, I I would like to do this full time at, at at some point. I'm still uh, I'm still having a comp a different company I, I need to take care of as well, but. Uh, but it's uh, definitely this is. I really I I, I enjoy this and uh, I I enjoy uh, yeah improving both my craft and I also enjoy uh, improving uh, what I can do with uh, with a camera and 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 editing. So uh, so that's uh, and I think definitely the 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 future will be less videos, not more videos. I'm definitely going to put out videos regularly, and but not. I'm not going to put myself up on a, on a weekly or monthly schedule. Sometimes I think I'm going to make uh, one video in in three months, maybe. So where where do you see Measure Twice uh, got once uh, uh, going? She's been interviewed. Chris being interviewed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe, maybe I should have. Um, brought... um, where, where do we see it going? Uh, we um, this this season we uh, we were trying a lot of different things, and um, obviously we, we want to grow the channel. We, we've we've got four seasons under the belt now, and uh, yeah, well, our subscriber count isn't where we would like it to be. Our view counts are um are very very low. Uh, we between Dirk and myself, we think we've got a very very good product here with Measure Twice Cut Ones. Mm. Um, We've had a lot of great, um, a lot of great uh, guests on, like yourself, for example. Um, we've made a lot of, lot of good contacts. So we, we're trying to step up our game this season. We want to, we want to sort of try and take it up another notch and see where we go with it. Yeah. And, and given we, the audience we do have is um, fantastic. We, 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 we thrive on their feedback. Uh, but as Chris mentioned. Uh, there has to be a new dynamic that comes into it because if we stagnate, the show's finished. Yeah. So yeah. It, we, we must we must try our best to make it um, succeed. Mm. And yeah, at at you know different, we have to just try different things, Jasper. And uh, you know, hopefully they they do work. And um, yeah, and and the audience builds by natural attrition as well. Yep. But with a little bit of helping hand from other sources. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm not going to put out the weekly videos and and uh, and uh, also maybe you you don't have to put out weekly videos. I I, I like that you do it, but uh, but maybe if you get tired uh, or, or maybe if if you don't have anything in, interesting, uh, so maybe just uh, every fourteen days or every three weeks and 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 just. Mm. Well, that's that's what we're doing. We're trying this season. We're going to try put out a, a video every two weeks, yeah, instead of weekly, okay, and um, and see how we go with that. Because I mean, I'm pretty sure that a lot of people don't realise <clears throat> how much work actually goes into making a show like this. Yeah, you know, like for example, just the interview with you. I mean, it's way past your bedtime over in Denmark, and yet you, here you are. You're sitting in your workshop, and um, and here it's it's really really early in the morning. You know, you've got those <laughs> little things to cover. Yeah. Um, and um, I just and then at the end of it all, I've got to go through and edit the whole thing and make make it sound interesting and uh, and take out the good bit, uh, leave in the good bits, take out the bad, <laughs> bits, of which there are a lot. Exactly. So it's a I mean, bit of editing to go on. And, and then you've got Dirk that's got to, you know, try and organise all these things, you know, and yeah. uh, and and that's that's a lot as well, you know, like to, to ring people around the world and say, hey, listen, we want to interview you, but you've got three days to sort it out, you know. Yeah. It's, it's there's a lot of lot of work that goes into it. And, and yeah, yeah. just going back to when we had COVID, <laughs> we were, you know, we were on the computer at my house. At, we yeah. we like to do it in person because. Uh, that's how you bounce off each other mm. in, in, in the questioning and in the the whole task that we have that's ahead of us. Yeah. yeah, we don't we don't make excuses for what we do because we love it. We absolutely love yeah. it. But it, it yeah, 
he works shift work, so you know, day shift one week, afternoon the next. Yeah. And I I want to do it at this place, so yeah, we have to compromise. That's mm. the only thing. You're you're really really tough guys. You you have a you have a, a day job, and uh, you have your own YouTube channels. You have your workshop, and then you're doing this, and then you're doing the mega meetup. Whoa. Maybe you don't have two thousand views on the video, but but you have the the, the two hundred views, and it, it's the right people who sees the video, and maybe that's that's the important. Oh, no. part. Yeah, well, don't get us wrong. We're we're very grateful for the people that do watch us. You know, we um we, we thank each and every one of them. And um, but as as a as a channel, we'd really like to see it grow. You know, we'd Absolutely. like to see more people come on board and 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 enjoy the content that we provide. You know. Yeah. In in a, in a in a in a sense, you put it down to this: you go to work, not to see your income go backwards. So <laughs> everything in life is in that step forward. So yeah. that's that's why we're looking at you know hopefully mm. uh, getting getting to higher ground mm. if we can. Yeah. With that, I think we'll um, we'll sign off. We will sign off and we say uh, wholeheartedly to you, thank you very, very much. Thank given, you. Given, given that we've spoken time difference and what have you, but uh, really good insight to what makes you uh, a unique uh, producer of videos and film. So, yeah. you know, we we take a lot out of listening to what you've said and uh, thank you, mate. And so I think the viewers will as well. For sure. Yep. Guys, thank you for 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 calling me uh, and having me on on, on the show, and uh, thank you for yeah for being so uh, so uh, so friendly and uh, and welcoming to uh, to to people from from all over the world, even even Denmark. That was, hey, welcome. That's it's what we do, Jesper. It's what we that's do. Great. Keep we're keep to, doing it. Keep, uh, keep being make, open. Yeah, we're trying to make the world a smaller place. You definitely have, mm. but I'm 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 afraid of your crocodile, so I'm I'm probably not gonna gonna move down on them you know, before you <laughs> have them under control. I'm footage of crocodiles off current affairs yesterday. <laughs> I said that's your meet and greet once you get out in the airport. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as soon as you get to Australia, the first thing that happens when you get off the plane is they issue you with uh, 140 flies, and they stick with you for the rest of your life. <laughs> okay. And, um, and then we've got all the spiders and stuff that we've got to put up with as well. So, <laughs> and, I'm, and I'm not a big fan of spiders, if anyone knows me. I'm not a very big, not fan, a big of fan of spiders either. I can't stand them. <laughs> Bang. <laughs> oh, man. All right, mate. Well, you, you go to bed if you can. And uh, we look forward to seeing future videos from you, mate. Because, uh, okay. And stuff. Stay in touch. Stay in touch always. Yeah, I will. Absolutely. And and, and and you too. Definitely. All right. All right. No well, worries. Thanks. Take take care. Be Cheers, safe. Mike. Cheers. <laughs> wow, what a what a fantastic interview with Jesper there from Jesper Mates, Chris. Uh very very good person who's got a lot of good things going on in his life. Yes, he does. And um he, he actually watching his videos. I, I, I thoroughly recommend people go and watch his videos because they're a little bit of a different approach to the whole, you know, DIY mm. yep. woodworking aspect. Uh, and he's uh, yeah, he's going places. He's got, he is. He's getting a bit of support himself. He is. Yes. He is. So. And uh, I, you know what? I enjoy watching his videos because he's um, mm. he's a good storyteller, isn't he? Brilliant. Yeah. 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 And his English is uh, his narration uh, with a little bit of an accent, not too bad at all. Speak uh, better English than you and me. Yeah, yeah. It sounds really raw, and you know, like it, it really captures your imagination. So go and support Jesper. So Chris, we want to thank once again the new supporters we've got on board. Yep. The old supporters we've got on board. Yep. Uh, all the wonderful people who watch our show and leave comments, and uh, you know, just make the whole part work for uh, everyone. Measure Twice, Cut Once Facebook group now out there. Yes. And also, we'd appreciate it if your first time viewing, uh, that you uh, hit the like. Yes. Uh, subscribe. Yep. And the notification bell. Ding. For all. Hit all. Hit all. Don't know why you have to do it, but hit all. And we're only going to be bothering you every two weeks now, so it's not yep. like every week. Bye annual. Bye. No. No, bye monthly. Bye monthly. Yeah. Fortnightly. <laughs>
Hold on. That's easy. I've got a headache, Dirk. Yeah, yeah. Have, have another pill. Um, <laughs> anyway, so without uh, any more to say for this episode, thank you for watching. And Chris, I'm going to sign off now by saying, Uh What do I normally say? Catch you later. No, no. Bye for now. Yeah, I've got one for free. You've had one? Yeah, I've had one, yeah. You're supposed to take two, eh? No, it's only one. No, it's two. One. Morning, midday, afternoon. The well, night. I used to take two. Oh, I should take no, two. No, 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 no. No, it's oh. done now. <laughs> yeah, halfway through the shoot. I'm trying to fucking pick you up off the ground while I'm calling triple O. If I start tripping out, it's all your fault. I know I say this, hang on a minute, Jesper, hang on. I know I say this every time, but can you take your hat off, please? Thank you. <laughs> all right. You all right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, You're about, you about to sneeze, will you? Uh, I'm going to sneeze. Just, just a moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, all we have to do now, Jesper, is just teach you how to say good day. Good day. Good up, no, good day. Good day. Good day. Good day. That's it. See. Yeah. Good day. Yeah, yeah. In Danish, we would just say if it's morning, we would say uh, uh, like good morning. We would say come on. Good morning. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Is yeah, it? Yeah. Is it not talk? Tuck scally up or something? Tuck? I or have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Maybe Swedish. I don't either half the time. <laughs> don't worry about it. Chris, give me a tea. A what? You just play along. Oh, okay. <laughs>